In this exercise, we're going to review event handlers and changing scenes. This is something that you probably did the first time you took Flash, but it may have been a while, so I want to go through it again. First, I'm going to set up my initial scene. And I'm just going to have it say 1, so I know what scene that I'm on. Then I'm going to add buttons using my window common library buttons library and I like to use my playback buttons and I'll select my play button put it on the stage and instead of creating a special back button I can just paste this using command C and then command V I'm using a Mac it's slightly different on a PC, just using the control key. I'm going to use my free transform tool. Flip it 180 degrees. One's pointing forward, one's pointing back. Okay, most important thing when you're programming a button, first step, you should give it an instance name in the properties. So I like to name them with the scene number because we're actually going to have the button existing in three scenes. At the end of this, we're going to have the button to the right moving forward, so you'll go from scene 1 to scene 2 to scene 3 to scene 1. The button to the left will move you backwards. If you're starting on scene 1, it will go scene 3, scene 2, scene 1, back to scene 3. So I'm going to name this forward 1. I'll name my other button backwards, backward 1. I find it simplest if I'm going to use repetitive code rather than writing the code over and over again. Before I copy my scene, I'm going to write the code. So I'm going to go into the timeline. I'm going to add a new layer, which I will call Actions. And the Actions layer should always be the top layer because typically Flash will load from bottom to top. You can change those settings but it's a bad idea. It's generally just best to leave your actions layer at the top layer and that'll make sure that everything is loaded before it gets to the programming code. So layer one, I'm going to call content. In my actions layer, I'm going to write some basic code. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a stop statement, which will make sure that everything halts, all the action halts here. The next thing I need to do is add an event listener to my button. You should use the Pathfinder tool right here. It looks like a target. Insert a target path to find your button. I'm going to select forward one, and it puts in the code object this dot forward one. This code is actually optional; it would work without it, but this is the way Flash does want it forwarded. I'm going to have to add an event listener, which will make it listen for a click event. So it's going to listen for mouse event dot click. That way it will recognize when I've clicked on the button and then it will go to whatever function I name next. So I'm going to call the function go forward one and it will then call that function. I can hide this to make it more visible for you. I've made my font a little larger to make it easier for you to read. The next thing I have to do is I have to actually write the function. So the first thing I'll do is tell it that it is a function by typing in function. Then I use the function name, go forward one. Notice that there's a discrepancy here. These two need to match exactly, and I should be using camelback notation where each new word starts with a capital letter. Then I'm going to receive an event the type mouse event, which is our button click, and I'm not going to return it, turn anything, so at the end it will say void. I do not put a semicolon here because that's not the end of the function. The function includes whatever directions we have inside the curly brackets. In this case it's going to be very simple. We're going to tell it to go to and stop, then we put in the frame number of the scene we'd like to go to and the name of the scene. I will name all of my scenes the same way, and I will name my scene Scene 2, and the scene name has to be in quotes. Close the bracket, curly bracket, I'm sorry, close the parentheses, 
putting your semicolon, and you can check to see if there are any errors. No errors. So my next step would not be to play this because I don't actually have a scene 2 to go to. I would hit Shift F2 if you're using a Mac. You may need the function key, which I need on my laptop. I'm going to rename scene 1 to be scene 1, all lowercase, no spaces. And then I can copy the scene, which I'll do twice, creating scene 2 and scene 3. I'll open this window again and I can move rapidly between the scenes by clicking on them. Since it was an exact copy, nothing has changed in the scenes. And I generally will go through and change the scenes first and then the programming code. That works better for me. The first thing I want to change is the actual name or the identifier on the stage so that we'll know if we've gotten to scene two. I also want to change the button names. So instead of having I'm changing to the arrow here. Instead of having forward one, this should become forward two because it's in a different scene. If you have the exact same name on two assets in different scenes, Flash won't know which one you're referring to. Then I will go into scene three. I could do that from here or from here. And again, I will want to change it so it reflects that it is scene three. and I want to change my button names as well. Now since I copied the entire scene with all of the code in place, I can now go into scene two and change the appropriate code. It's forward button two, Go forward two. And I need to change that in each place that it exists. And in, if I'm in scene two, I need to go to scene three. This doesn't change because it's your frame number and it will be frame one in every scene. In scene three, I would change my button name to three the function call to go forward three, the function name to go forward three, and if I'm actually in scene three, I would go back to scene one. I can now test this. I've only done the forward buttons. The back buttons would work the same. Okay, I have an error that Add event listener. Ah, see, I have a typo. I should have checked that with the blue check mark. So I'm going to have to change that in each of my scenes. This should have changed colors. There we go. So that's fixed. But I'm going to need to do that in each scene. I could have prevented this problem by using the blue check syntax and it should have caught that. You also should have been able to notice that there was something wrong because this text did not turn blue. Let's try it again. No errors. It goes one, two, three, one, two, three. The back button would work exactly the same way. So this is a simple slideshow using multiple scenes.